Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Now we are back in Dresden after we have uh, gotten Wolgif back and we are going to uh, head on into the Citadel so that we can uh, deal with the things that we need to deal with here. Let's save some adventures for later. A sharp loop, sharp looking kitsune gives you a quick business like bow. Commander, the matters before us are urgent, so let's stand on ceremony. I am Lady Konomi, the official attaché of Nerosian. Here are my credentials. He presents a scroll adorned with Galfrey's seal. Her Majesty has instructed me to lead your headquarters diplomatic council. Honestly, I was surprised when Lady Konomi asked me to join this council, but I'll do my best to fill the shoes of a trained diplomat. Ah. Uh, yeah, strange. I got invited to the council too. I'm sure foreign ambassadors will be thrilled to see my face and my manners. Lady Konomi, you haven't mistaken me for some other crusader land, have you? Wolgit is positively swelling with pride. Now this is the place to apply my talents. You know me, chief. I have a way with words. The fellow once managed to smooth talk the golden hand goons. He can talk anybody into anything. I, like many nobles, have been trained in diplomacy, and in fact I hold the title of Royal Emissary. It is passed down the Arundel line. I must say that prior to this day, I employed my diplomatic skills solely to undermine Mendev's international reputation. It is time to break that habit. I imagine preventing international scandals will be just as interesting as causing them. Who knows, I might even enjoy it. What is the Diplomatic Council and why do I need it? To solve matters of politics, of course. But the Crusade is more than just battles and sieges. It is the largest military project in all of Avistan, funded by the treasuries of more than a dozen major powers. And each of those powers, in addition to seeking victory over the demons, also pursues it its own goals. The Diplomatic Council will manage this tangle of political interests and prevent the crusade from losing the favor of influential benefactors, and while we're at it, ensure that Nerosian remains satisfied with the state of affairs. After all, for the last hundred years, the entirety of Mandevian politics has revolved around the crusades in some shape or form, and that is why the capital has sent me here, to observe, offer suggestions, and keep the diplomatic situation under control. I see you've been sent to keep an eye on me. Whatever gave you that idea, Commander? I am not an overseer. I am your loyal adviser. I do not intend to meddle in the way you run things, just consult with you in cases where the price of error is too high. Put your trust in me and get along swimmingly. After all, none of us here want to see Cheliax and Druma at each other's throats trying to settle their dispute by using their influence on us as political leverage. Am I wrong? And I doubt you would like if, if we made enemies in the ranks of Nerosian nobility who would attempt to undermine your war effort. This won't happen as long as you trust my experience. Tell me more about the Royal Council. What is it? The Royal Council, operating under Her Majesty, is the highest governing body in Mendev and comprises her most able and trusted servants. It is responsible for day-to-day -day matters of state, and they are the hands and the voice of the Queen. The Council has gathered people from all walks of life. Some of them are nobles, but many more are citizens of humble origins who earn their positions through their wit. Many are rich, but a fair number of them are more humble means of more humble means. Some are pious and pure of heart, like Lord Inquisitor Kasori and Captain Jasper of the Crusader Heralds. Others are more flexible and ambitious, but each of them faithfully serves Mendev's cause. I have a question about the composition of this council. Do you find someone's presence surprising? Whatever. What's on the Council's agenda today? I hate to say it, Commander, but not everyone in Erosion is pleased with your progress. Some believe that, to use their words, 
you are out of control and fancy yourself an independent leader. It wouldn't surprise me if you encountered supply disruptions in the near future. I would suggest quelling their anger. Show the capital that you haven't forgotten about the chain of command. For example, you could hold a parade in honor of Her Majesty. We need to demonstrate that we're keeping Nerosian in mind. Why don't we invite the capital's high priest to Dresden for a religious festival? It'll be appropriate, and the church's support will shield us from the accusations of schemers. Pander to the naysayers? I think not. I propose we hold a parade in your honour, Caledon. This is your victory, and if cousin Galfrey wants to show off in front of the soldiers, she's welcome to capture something of her own. Lan's eyes flash with anger. Are they out of their mind? We've got a whole Dresden full of soldiers who need medicine, food and weapons. Until everyone has been taken care of, we can't waste a single coin on pointless celebrations. We've got to show we're loyal? No sweat. We'll we grease some palms in the Royal Council and they'll sing songs about how we're all devoted and well behaved. What did I do to incur Nerosian's discontent? You were too good. You reclaimed Canabras, you won the Battle of Dresden, you're a menace to the world wound, your authority grows, and the influence of the Queen's confidants diminishes. This creates the impression that there's only enough space for you at the top. The members of the Royal Council are afraid that you will muscle them out of the political arena altogether. After all, if you're doing so well, maybe Her Majesty doesn't need them that much. Therefore, they might try to discredit you impede your war effort, reduce the scale of your victories. Make some concessions and they'll see that you're open to negotiations. We can see the choice effects here, so that unlocks the religious feast decree, which is a repeatable decree. Uh, we have this one, commander's parade decree, helping those in need. Bribery. And of course, Royal Parade. None of these are particularly interesting to me, so uh, let's go with uh, Lady Konomi, no matter how much I might dislike her, because I really dislike this Lady Konomi. And I'm sure you will all come to appreciate why. Let's hold a parade in Her Majesty's honour then. I'm glad that you have listened to my proposal. Making friends in the Royal Council will go a long way. It is good that we got off on the right foot, Commander. There will be plenty more issues requiring your decision soon, but I no do not doubt that we will handle them just as expediently. Ha! Hail, Commander! Before you an aged, yet fit and sturdy Gurundi stands at attention. His dark skin has an earthy tone to it, and crystals sparkle forth from where his hair and eyebrows should be, clearly identifying him as an Oread. Captain Harmattan, Chair of your Staff Council, by order of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey, here to deliver a report. I'm on this council too. Sila salutes briskly. We'll be racking our brains on how to improve troop morale. I reckon the key is to back up our words with actions, lead your soldiers by example, and they'll be eager to follow. Drawing on my experience as a paralictor, my advice is to maintain calculated moderation in every regard, be it in incentive or penalty, and to be decisive. We have no need for doubts or turmoil. I'm doomed to be your adviser, but do you know what that means? that you are doomed to listen to my advice. To start things off, here's an incredibly novel and deep thought for you. Loyalty, passion, and morale. All of these can be easily bought with money. Commander, permission to report. We have encountered a problem. Although we are still getting volunteers, we are now seeing cases of desertion. Many who joined the Dresden campaign believe that their duty has been fulfilled with the victory, and they are not keen on staying in the garrison. Those from Canabras wish to return home and rebuild their ruined city. Lastly, there are those who are afraid of lingering in a place where demons might show up with a retaliatory expedition at any moment. 
My suggestion is my suggestion is to improve living conditions for the privates, raise their pay, give them extra rations and reward those who have distinguished themselves on the battlefield with commendations and gifts. Soldiers don't want to leave armies that appreciate them. I feel for those folks, but we have to convince them to stay. I think we might get some help from the servants of the gods. They'll tell the soldiers that the danger has not yet passed and inspire them to keep up the fight against evil. As long as the wound is open, the whole world is in danger. We can't just go home and live like we used to, no matter how badly we want that to happen. Most of the Crusaders are volunteers, but they have no right to subvert military discipline. That kind of attitude is tantamount to treason, regardless of who expresses it. We have to identify the instigators, arrest them, and administer harsh punishment to make an example of them. This problem is quite simply solved with coin, but handing money out to privates is practically throwing it away. We need to pay the officers handsomely, then they'll figure out how to raise their subordinates' morale. Tell me, Captain, what does the Staff Council do? In short, we make sure that whenever orders are given, they are executed properly. Our job is to keep the soldiers' morale high, so they always follow their officers' command without question. As for the officers themselves, we look out for any unseemly or incompetent types who subvert the troops' trust. Okay, this one, Glory to the Heroes Decree. Might be useful to have a decree that raises morale. Hunting down mutiny. 14 days versus 30 days. Regils. Since mercenary units are already so expensive as it is as a lich, I'm not really that interested in that. Bribes for the officers. 15 to 20. Whereas this one is 60 to 25. Distributing provisions. Requires 300 materials, whereas Regil's requires leadership, period. We will go with Regil then. I mean, hey. Regil, find the instigators and make an example of them. Affirmative. I already have my eye on the most spirited ones. I will apprehend them immediately. Thank you, Commander. Should any other difficulties arise that require your attention, I will deliver a report promptly. Hail, Commander. Middle-aged dwarf who has clearly seen some combat salutes you with one barely moving bone-dry hand. On her face are huge scarred claw marks. A black eye patch covers one eye, but she is watching you with the other, intent and somber. Dorgalinda Stranglehold, Chair of the Logistics Council, at your service. We've got ourselves an ugly situation that requires your decision. Hey there, I'm on this council too. You know me, I'm a tip-top logistic counsellor. want all of your logistics to mysteriously, or not so mysteriously, disappear, I suppose. I hope I won't get in anyone's way if I join you. Aru looks all around with visible worry. I think I could give some good advice here, if you don't mind, of course. Hopefully this council will be benefit from my vast experience surviving with gear that consists of rocks and sticks, and where any dinner that's not squirming on your plate is considered a feast. In all, kind of like our crusade. I won't lie to you, our logistics are a mess. We need more of everything, and what we do have is in disarray. Crates of provisions are rotting away in storehouses because some idiot quartermaster spilled beer on the papers. And fools are not the worst problem, there's also theft. Some officers grease palms to get a helmet with stylish plumage or a fancy blade from an erosion. Meanwhile, that means that ordinary soldiers are being armed with barely more than kitchen knives, hammer and tongs. It is time to give the entire logistics staff the bum's rush. Question is, where do we find capable and honest people to replace them? The army's always a mess. It's the army, duh. If you want to get ourselves out of the bog, supplies have begun to hand 
supplies got to be handled by real money makers, not soldiers. Merchants, store clerks, people with a habit of counting every count coin, not sucking away on the kingdom's udder. These scoundrels must be replaced with decent, honorable people. Selfless souls who have proven that they put their comrades' lives above all else, especially with the, especially their own wealth. Surely that's who will take the best care of our soldiers. Let's get some veterans on the job. People who've had their fill on the fill of the front lines and who know firsthand what life is like for a common soldiers, what the rations taste like and how the boots are always the wrong size. My suggestion is to call some experienced, well-connected supply officers from Nerosian. Let them leave their cushy jobs in Mendev and work up a sweat for the good of the crusade. Dorkalinda, what are this council's responsibilities? The Logistics Council deals with all matters relating to supplying the army. Most issues will be trivial and undeserving of your attention. However, from time to time, serious decision will need to be made, and that's when I'll convene the council. Okay, what are our choices here? Expensive feet that goes to every single trainable unit. It's not bad. This one. That is definitely not bad. This one. That's a bit meh, since I'm cheating in the troops. That's for mercenary units, so that's completely and utterly ridiculously meh. I think we'll go with the uh, Wuljith then. Wuljith, we will staff our quartermaster servants service with merchants. It can't go wrong with those guys. We just gotta watch what they're selling and to whom. If they're by their lo lonesome, they might sell something to the demons. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, they won't. At least not to the demons. Probably. Look, it'll be fine. Then it's decided. No matter what our new quartermasters are like, there is no possible way they can be worse than what we have now. The results will be reported to you, and if anything else comes up, I will call the council right away. These council things take time, especially when I read out everything. Demon's army approaching. They formed a logistics council. So these are done. Now in development. Uh, yeah. Can't rank up currently, so we're going to build the... It takes 14 days. We need the ziggurat. We need the ziggurat as quickly as possible, so... Lich Zacharias demands a cigarette to be constructed in Dresden, which will become a safe fortress for the commander and his laboratory, a refuge for his undead servants and a place to perform sinister rituals. Boom. That'll take 30 days. That's the longest decree I've ever had. Uh, anyone, anything else? We have this one. I think we'll take that one. And the fate of Soul Shear. Soul Shear is one of the few relics I'm not sure about what will turn into, whether it's good or bad. So um, let's issue this decree as well. And actually, I probably should move the troops around too. The loading times could be a little bit less. Uh, you are no longer needed there. More needed in... Go to Dresden. And go that way. Uh, 
army two, you can continue down into this area. This one is on its way to attack us, so... I think I'll make this, uh... Point one episode, because there is very little action. Please die, because you're going to do bad things. Get, uh, ooh, nice. Social will appreciate that. I have no idea if that's down or that way. Apparently it was that this way. Good. Yeah, these guys stand much of a chance. Then again, the game, of course, doesn't count on me having these kinds of armies. remember which one of these are the most dangerous ones. This is a melee one. Can I inspect? Uh... Yeah, this guy can teleport. This guy will summon and do lightning bolt, so we need to deal with him. This one can use the Phantasmal Killer, which is nasty. Okay. Might be able to kill them. Very good. You next. Then you. Exactly how much hit points do you have? Found a very decent scythe. Wasn't so bad. I would have thought that was worse. I'm terribly afraid you need to die. This is a rather large army. Can you wait? Sadly, it isn't enough. Thank 
thank you. I really wanted to get rid of you. Tower of Yath. It's a pleasant place. A fireball. I'm going to go with haste. There's endurance is also a nice, but okay. Now this place don't have material points. So watchtower, citadel, uh, supply center, and I also think a hospital. I think we'll leave the army there for now. This army is going to be absolutely crap. Then again, we're going up against undead, so... Uh, lights. What is this? Penetrating strike. Two forward. Okay, then we have this other unit of whites. That was more effective than I thought. I wonder if you can raise undead troops as undead. It's a good question. Bigger those, please. sounds. <laughs> Apparently we can replenish skeletons at the infirmary at least. Yeah, we have more troops now, so I guess we can. Master of Maneuver would be nice. We can do this, and we can go in. And this is Crusader Army 3, I think. Okay, I think... I think it would be nice to take that fortress. Oh my god. Just remain where you are. to level up as well. The stratagem things, I'm not that happy about. Um, I 
suppose this. Which is ironic to cast on skeletons and zombies, but... As for this place... We definitely want a watchtower here. We also want a citadel here. And then... Supply center and a hospital. The hospitals all increase, plus 5% each of the infirmary sizes of your various armies. Uh, let's let these guys catch up. Apparently the road here connects up to there, I have no idea. I have no idea where that road goes either. Same with that one. I don't think I found this road when I played the last time. Can use these to map up the roads, I suppose. Okay, that would be the campaign movement. Now I need to go rest. Claim some spells and stuff like that. There is one thing that I have forgotten. I tire. Yes, this book reminded me. We have books to read. A Chronicle of Failure. And we have the uh, Cooking Almanac by Jubilus Narthropel. Pathfinder Kingmaker. Crusade Chronicles. Know Thy Enemy. Knight of the Witch, Prodigal Sons, Sarkoris Lost, Soldier Humor, 5th edition. The Acts of Iomade, The Adventures of Brim the Crusader. The History of the World Wound. I'm pretty sure we've had we have a few copies of that book. A letter from Dresden. And to the commander from the Queen. That's those out of the way. We learned something from four of those books. Speaking of which, the stuff that we've learned from those books, some of those are actually quite nifty. We have plus one bonus to attack and damage with Glaive. Plus one uh, armor class against dragons. Competence on saving throw against swarms. Shield bonus against demons. Ten hit points. Plus one perception and stealth, plus one law and religion and law nature, plus one competence towards death spells, plus one competence towards saving throws versus disease and sickened. So yeah, these books are not at all bad. We'll have a quick nap. The world must be cleansed. Starting with my immediate vicinity. 
Okay. Oops. Rather macabre. I don't think an entire day has passed, so I suspect that the armies will still be at zero movement. Yes, which is fine. See their need for uh, them being moved again. Are moving far, far quicker than the game expects us to because of my uh, tiny little uh, minor cheating. But uh, I think we will wrap up here, and in the next episode, we are de very definitely going to go. Um, after that uh, location where the demons are um, releasing uh, troops, uh, ambush troops and so forth. Because that one is a timed one and it is very important that we do it as quickly as possible. Now if you do have any questions and or comments, as always please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. For now, thank you all so much for joining me and I hope to be seeing you all in the next episode.